Hey guys, and welcome back to the Trek Yards podcast. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Carl Hawkins, and we have a guest. Who are you, sir? Hi, I'm Manu Ente Reme. I'm Egypt from Star Trek Voyager and the co-creator of Fifth Passenger, Benjamin Troubles, and The Circuit, uh, the, my new project out on Kickstarter. I feel like you've said that a lot of times, because that just rolled off your tongue, didn't it? That's cool. <laughs> that is very cool. Yeah, we're here to talk about The Circuit today, an anthology series. We've sort of talked about it previously, but now we're on as a full uh, Trek Yards team to talk about it. And I like it, but Stuart doesn't know as much as me, because we've talked about it before, Manu. So, Stuart, what do you know about The Circuit? What do you know, Stuart? The layman. I know it's an anthology series of 12 different stories, all taking place in the sci-fi, in a sci-fi universe, and all in the same location. Uh, but each one will be slightly different. One's a romantic comedy, one's serious, one's a western even. Uh, lots of exciting stuff, so... Does that sum it up? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and World well, Koenig's in it. Always, always yes. got to say that. Oh, the, the, the cast is phenomenal. Um, but I can't name them all off the top of my head. That's what. That's why we have a special guest. He can yeah. talk about it. He's, I think he'll know them back to back. He'll know them off the top of his head, I think. Just, just... I, think I so. do. I can name them off the top of my head. They're behind him there. You see them uh, there. But, you know, the circuit has changed a little bit uh, over time. You know, mm. it's been a... But now, it you know, it's a, a, a ten episode science oh. fiction anthology that all takes place in the mega city of Erbiesa. And Erbiesa is like, uh, if, if you see Judge Dredd, you remember mm. the mega cities? Now, the Erbiesa is like a mega city, except it's all not crappy. Like Judge Dredd, it was like just okay. a horrible, crappy place to live. Okay. Erbiesa is the utopian society. It's got a bunch of them. It's amazing. There are dark corners. There are things going on underneath the alleys of Erbiesa, but it's huge. National parks fit within Erbiesa. Who knows what's even on the outside of Erbiesa? That's a question that we'll discover. Uh, where is it? Planet Earth? Probably. When is it? The future? Probably. Um, and 10 episodes happen there, and they're all standalone episodes, like Steven Spielberg's Amazing Stories, or The mm. Twilight Zone, or Black Mirror, except mm. all our episodes aren't dark. Uh, you know, like he said earlier, they're, uh, they're all science fiction, but they're all a science fiction subgenre, and they'll all be directed by a different director. And the cool thing about our show, compared to other anthologies, is there is a deeper story within each mm. standalone episode that is held together with these spider like threads, and the mystery of what is the circuit is uh, what you'll discover uh, along the series as you as you get to watch episode to episode. And also, like American Horror Story, if we get to do a season two, our cast will come back. It won't be the circuit Urbiesa anymore. It'll be the circuit something else, and we'll explore a new thing just like American Horror Story does, but we'll have the same cast come back. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, we obviously talked to you when it was a, a movie concept, uh, and I think we talked to you at the time about... You know, uh, anthology movies have been made but it's a difficult thing to, to do because of your splitting up a certain runtime between different stories but and and people's pe that people are not trained in cinema to understand multiple smaller things in one big hole whereas a, a web show or a tv show as, as it may end up being you know people understand condensed stories and i love that you're now putting into a, a fictional place in the future potentially uh it's a great little um, you know, uh, wraparound story. It's a nice little thing. You you, you want to learn about this universe as well as just it being modern day. So you know, I'm, I know uh, we talked about it a little bit, but reading this Kickstarter page, which you're, you're still raising right now and doing very very well, uh, well, obviously can do better. I I, I liked the, the extra ideas you're bringing to it. I think it adds not only layers of depth but also layers of extra intrigue to it. Which... Yeah, I think what's what, what's exciting for me too is that you're going to see this city and you're going to see this new world but you're going to see a different genre twist on it every time. So when the mm -hmm. genre twists, the world will twist a little bit, and you'll get ten different directors look at Urbiesa. So it'll be, it'll be mm -hmm. fun to tweak the city every time for the genre uh, and, what, and where we are in the city and get to discover more about the city as each episode goes along. So as soon as you said that, I mean, I'm visualizing, obviously, it's a CG cityscape, but, you know, a lot of these different genres, you know, noirs often have a darker, more blue color tone, westerns often have a bit more orange, you suddenly have the same CG city, but then the, the artist is radically altering, but in the subtle, like, radically but in the subtleties, changing the feel, and you get that, that visually, that's, that sounds very, very interesting, it'd be interesting to see how you do that, I mean, one, you can have a very, one could be just at night, again, totally change the look of the city, uh, for example, you know, arrow, flash, 
Legends of Tomorrow, they all, they all filmed in the same location, but Arrow is almost exclusively filmed at night. Flash is filmed during mm. the day. Same locations-ish, but suddenly that change of context makes them feel a whole different tone. So that's, again, yeah. I love the thought you put in, Money. I've always been impressed by the, the thought you put in, and I'm very glad you've hit that first goal, because I wanna, I've want to. i said this since we first met, I want to see this made. So Thank you. You better go, you. Better, yeah. you better go and make excited. it. At the first goal too, and and where it, a lot of people are calling from the outside private sector investment world too. So, I've actually found an investor that's willing to match funds for us up to two hundred k. So we're really pushing, really pushing Oof. as hard as we can to try to raise that, because if we can do that, then suddenly we'll have close to half a million, and we can release this as like a three episode, really well produced anthology miniseries to begin with. And then take that to like Netflix, HBO, and and present the package to them to try to get us a whole season, which is basically the, the same thing that Black Mirror did, um, coming to America. But what does that mean to you? I mean, to, to, to match funds is such an important thing, and to have oh, someone yeah. that I mean, that's that I, I heard that on a live stream we did the other day. I was so pleased for you. Obviously, you need to reach that, but that's I mean, how do you feel being having that opportunity? And it's just there, you know. It's just that. It, yes, it's really within our grasp, it, it, and it's really how I've produced for the eight years that I've done it. I mean, the first film I made, it was called Benjamin Troubles, and, and we were only able to raise like six grand or 16 grand maybe on Kickstarter. This was eight years ago. But then in the private sector, we were able to raise significantly more than that, and, and we made a $180,000 film. With Fifth Passenger, we were able to raise a hundred grand on Kickstarter from the fans, God bless them, and that chunk of money, and this is something that people on Kickstarter that are donating outside of Hollywood uh, don't really know and that is very often you'll get that hundred grand and what we did with Fifth Passenger is then we went to the private sector and we were able to to raise that and many times over to complete Fifth Passenger and um, I'm not going to say how much because then distributors out there will try to rip us off for it but we made this beautiful film and we're only like four weeks away about from being completely finished and I'm really proud of Scott Baker, Morgan Lariah, myself, Ryan Husk, the producers involved, the actors, everybody in that movie. Uh, Tobias Richter from Germany has mm -hmm. done these amazing uh, visual effects. My guys, Mike Phillips from The Circuit and, and other projects, he worked on Star Wars Rogue One and The Wall. And we were mentioning Flash and DC's Legends of Tomorrow and Arrow, he used to oversee that department for, for a year. Um, Fifth Passenger looks really, really good, and it'll be out soon. Uh, and it, it's, I'm really excited to start sharing it with an audience. So, if you don't, go to fifthpassenger.com and, and check it out. And uh, everything will be updated within a month, and the film will be out very soon. Cool. cool. Now, one question I have: You mentioned different directors for each one. Can you um, just name some of the directors and what they've done, so that the people out there know what to expect? Maybe. Yeah, one of our directors' names is. Uh, James Bird and James Bird made a indie film called Eat Spirit Eat and then he made another indie film called Honey Glue and if you haven't seen Honey Glue I, I highly recommend seeing it it's a, a cancer love story but it's magical it's also kind of a fairy tale um, and it's a, a fantastic film James uh, I was working on another one of our directors movies called um, literally right before Aaron, and that's Ryan Agold's film. And Ryan Agold stars in The Blacklist. He plays Tom Keen and in The Blacklist Redemption, same character, Tom Keen. Hmm. He's one of our directors as well. Um, and I, when I was working on his film, I met Kobe Smulders and tried to hook her up with James and for his new, newest movie. And she liked it so much so that she brought it to UTA, and now UTA is involved. and. James is starting his film May 1st. I have a part in that film as well. Um, so these two guys are like up and coming, really talented. The last two films that I was on them with, that I was a part of, and, and watching these guys work there, they could be the next Spielbergs, you know, the next Tarantinos. They're really talented kids. And both of them are now getting a shot at multi million dollar films. So those are two of our guys. We also have Mike Phillips. Um, Mike Phillips made Fortress, a couple of other indie films. He's also been a showrunner, uh, worked for a lot of stuff on History Channel and Through the Wormhole with Morgan Freeman and uh, Ancient Aliens and uh, those guys digging around in Alaska, not Alaska, Nova Scotia, looking for that treasure. 
Oak Island. Yeah. I love that Oak show. Island. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, the, you know, um, and dogfights, Battle 360 and Patent 360 and all that History Channel stuff. Um, Mike Phillips is on board. And Mike is a, a great director and doesn't get to direct a film as often as he would like to. And I did a film called Fortress with him that he made six years ago, a B-17 battle film about the, the boys in Italy going uh, in World War II and the B-17 bombers. He's on board. We've got Scotty Baker on board, who directed Fifth Passenger. We've got Prince Bogdasarian on board, who directed... Um, I'm in it, so I should know the name. Abstraction and his new firm, his new film, uh, Diverted Eden. Um, and we're talking to a couple of other fantastic directors as well. Uh, Mark Fermi, we're talking to. He hasn't uh, signed on yet, but well, great to director. ask about one one Austin guy that the, the, the fans of Track Cards will know. I mean, Tim Russ, who's well known for starring iCarly. Yeah. You know, you work with him yeah. on, on Renegades, but I mean, his work on iCarly is, is unparalleled. What's he like as yeah, a director? No. I know him from Mr. Carly, too. I watch it daily. I mean, he's so, so good on that. I think he's directed that, too. I mean, it, it's got his stamp of approval all over it. Yeah, Tim Russ is going gonna, is gonna to do one of our, our episodes as well. Um, I'd like to do one, in fact. It, I, was it all gonna, I was interested on... to ask that as well. I don't know if, you, if you're confident as, as much to put yourself in that position, but, yeah, I think you Absolutely. should. I mean, yeah. those guys, you know, are ahead of me in, in line. But if we are able to pull this dream off, match funds, match funds again. Mm. I just did a film with Luke Hemsworth from Westworld, and uh, I'm going to have lunch with him in a couple of weeks, try to get him involved. Uh, I, I'd really like, you know, if, if we're able to pull a, a couple million together to, to make this anthology and make this miniseries right off the bat, um, uh, depending on how this Kickstarter goes, um, this is going to be hot. It's going to be fun, and I, I would be really dumb not to take the opportunity to direct one of these. Well, I'm I'm, in, I'm intrigued there. What? So, s skip ahead those thirty days. You've raised a decent budget. You're going to match funds. You've you've got a a, dec a realistic decent amount. What is the steps that are involved then? Actually, making not just a single piece, you know, a single movie or a single episode. How are you going to make this anthology? And it's so science fiction. I mean, how much green screen might there be? I mean, give us a. So a realistic idea of, for the fans, I mean, how do you make an anthology web TV show? Well, we've been really smart with how we prepared for this because mm -hmm. we didn't know what we were going to get from the Kickstarter. And so we've been writing screenplays and accepting screenplays from the mm -hmm. fans and uh, reworking screenplays from the fans and reworking our own. But we were very smart enough to, we, we were intelligent enough. We were very smart. Uh, we were intelligent enough to they make things go. <laughs> a, a fifty thousand dollars screenplay that we could make if that was all that came in mm. that just took place in, a, in an apartment in RBS in RBS so that we didn't mm. have to uh, get too complicated. Our CG guys could just make the apartment with hologra holograms and make it look mm. uh, you know futuristic. One green screenshot out a window mm. so you can see some of the city. Um, but then we have another screenplay that we can shoot for 80 grand. We have a screenplay we can shoot that's budgeted around 125k. We have one for 150k. We have one for a quarter of a million. And I like all the stories. I'm excited to do all of them. But, but we were very smart to prepare mm -hmm. for what we, what kind of funds we were going to get. So the next step is to finish the Kickstarter, see what kind of funds we have, mm -hmm. see if we can match funds and attach an A-list star so that we can have a really easy time attaching funds. Um, and then as soon as we know our budget, then the exciting thing is about choosing which screenplays to do. And then the most difficult challenge, but also the most exciting challenge is going and location scouting and deciding mm -hmm. which city or which cities Urbiesa is going to be and how we are going to uh, be smart with the money and still maintain a really great production value and show people what this city and then what this world looks like. That's going to be an, an incredible challenge and also an incredible, because every director is going to want to shoot somewhere else, but we're going to have to bring them in. And um, there'll be green screens, of course. I don't think there's going to be an all green screen episode but we'll use green screens on the street of regular cities. Um, we'll use green screens out the window of, a, of either sets that we build or apartments that we're in. Um, but a lot of green screen work uh, to, and, and then just uh, work like, you know, if you shoot a blue sky, 
and you want to put a ship in a blue sky, you don't need green screen to do that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the basic answer is then how do we build the city? What's the city look like? What time period are all these different episodes taking place in? Because a lot of the episodes take place at different time periods. Mm -hmm. And um, it kind of gives away that the overall arching story that connects them all together is going to have a, a little something to do with time travel. Um, oh, it's a, yeah. it's a quantum leap. It's a quantum leap spinoff. <laughs> ah. cool. quantum leap spin nice. You know, quantum leap has popped into our brain when we were in development, thinking about what this story was going to be about. Um, and for a while there, we were, you know, we were very much like I was watching Quantum Leap episodes, and even it was one of my favorite shows when I was a kid. Mm, yeah. Uh, but it, it went along. It the the thought process the process at the time has since died, and so it's not quantum. <laughs> well, you had mentioned attaching some A list actors to the these projects to mm. get, you know, make them better. Can you just give us a quick run through or list of some of the Oof. actors that might be involved in these projects? Yeah, I mean these. Now I, I can't say that these people are interested. I but, that well, there's there's two people that I'm pretty sure that I can get interested, and in, and I've I've mentioned them already. I've mentioned Kobe and I've mentioned uh, Luke Hemsworth, but you know I'm also friends with the people I name dropped before from uh, from my childhood: Ben Foster, Shane West, uh, Jesse Beale. Yeah. Um, I'd like to approach Jesse Beale. I'd like to approach you know some of my Star Trek friends that are worth more now. Um, Captain Janeway. I'd like to approach. Well, I will just uh, I will just name drop myself there. But you know, uh, I had the opportunity to meet Patrick Stewart uh, very recently. Sit down with him for for two hours at his London apartment to interview him. And and one thing he says sort of off the record, but I'll say it because it's kind of interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is that you know he he doesn't get approached for that many pieces. He would like to be approached with more different things, because he's yeah. you know there is a certain reputation. But I mean he likes he he really is an actor about the acting. So if you've got an interesting part, I mean yeah he does indie films and and he'll take a break he'll take a break on his uh, the amount that he's going to get paid as long as he's interested in the product and he, he's interested mm -hmm. in the part. I have this great script for him and Ian McKellen, and I have a friend Oof. that's good friends with Ian McKellen. So, you know, the, all those kind of options yeah. are things that could happen. Um, but, so basically when this Kickstarter ends, if we've done as well as we want to and we yeah. can uh, match funds, the, the first thing we're doing is, uh, you know, George Takei is a friend of mine and, and Brad. I have a great script for them. Um, and it, Aaron Paul, folks like that, Colin Hanks. Uh, we're basically going to, to pick the screenplays first or screenplay depending upon the budget and what we get and then we're going to go out and uh, find the right people to attach that are that make the film the type of film that film finance companies are willing to pre-sell and give you money for mm -hmm. um, and we already have a, a wonderful cast that I can't mm -hmm. name off the top of my head of uh, talented people I mean Sylvester McCoy who played Radagast the Brown from The Hobbit Robert Picardo's on that list of people that are valuable and worth money. Ryan Abel certainly is up and coming. Um, but if you want me to do it, it's Walter Koenig, Ryan Abel, Terry Farrell, Robert Beltran, Armin Shimmerman, Gigi Edgley, Robert Picardo, Sylvester McCoy, Ethan Phillips, Valerie Leslie, J.D. Herzler, Robert O'Reilly, Corn Nemec, Hannah Hate, Rob Archer, J. Jai Coutre, Minnie Robinson, Tim Russell, Livy Diablo, Cordy St. New from Teen Wolf, Doug Jones, Miltos, Yaramello from Star Wars, and Game of Thrones, and myself, Monumente Rame. He just read the, the Kickstarter page. I, I was That's... reading along. Yeah, that's the list I was looking for. Yeah. So thank you very much. Come on, you threw me under the bus. You threw me under the bus right there. Yeah. Well, we got to most of them. Most of them are on the wall behind you. I figured you'd know right off the top of your head. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's hard to think of any 23 people off the top of your head. <laughs> Doug Jones. I think I missed Doug Jones. Yeah. I say Doug. Um, but we have an, a, a great cast now but i would love to have that patrick stewart on the middle of the poster on the middle of the, the ads that would be fantastic and the i don't think the it's such a dream to to, to reach for that um depending on how we do these next four weeks well it's worth saying that you, you know you're being quite clever i, I suppose being able to pick which story based on budget so obviously these 22 actors aren't they're, they're all they're not all pitched in to play a certain role in each individual episode so i'm sure you know depending on which episode you pick 
certain actors have already you know had some interest or you've got some pegged in. So it'd be interesting yeah, to see well, sort of which combinations you already you already have, and then you can say, well, that, this role I've always wanted, say Patrick Stewart or whatever, and then you can. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've gone along. Some of the actors we've we've developed screenplays for and pitched mm. screenplay ideas to, and some of them have an idea of who they're playing, and I have an idea of who they're playing, um, but that could all change um hmm. and everybody that signed on has signed what's called a letter of intent letter so of interest in the project and so now it's just a matter of of after the kickstarter is over and after it's funded it's a matter of placing the people in the right roles i feel like i've got to ask the obvious trek yard slash fleet yards question is there any episodes that will take place on a ship Are there any ships spaceships there is one fan episode that takes okay. place in the ship that I like quite a bit. Um, at whether we shoot it or not, I don't know, but I really like the I like the concept and the ending and the theme. Um, so yeah, it's a possibility. And is it a Firefly rust bucket or is it an advanced something else? I'm trying to narrow you down here, Mono. I'm trying to get excited about spaceships <laughs> with you. <laughs> it, it's a uh, it's actually a really high tech ship that ends up being a, a Firefly rust bucket. Uh, Nice. Meaning that its its high tech systems uh, start shutting down, and, and probably, um, it's not as spiffy as this guy thinks it is. Cool, interesting. Cool. Well, I did. You think that wraps it up, Samuel? I Anything think other, I learned a lot. Yeah, I think yeah. I learned a lot. It's, it's yeah, it's a fun project. I mean, Stuart, obviously, what, what do you think now, having been pitched it sort of, but had a nice discussion about it? I'm super excited. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys can come up with because you sound like you got everything planned out and yeah. you got multiple backup plans. So I love that. Yeah. Uh, so looking forward to seeing what comes out of it. So and again, we'll give uh, one thing that we have left out uh, about the project in general, Ooh. which is basically the whole idea for putting it together. Um, is That's it's, quite it's a thing to leave out then? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a the whole reason for getting this together was uh, you know it started in a diner with Walter Koenig a couple of years ago and we wanted to do something that was uh, um, that brought back Roddenberry-esque science fiction, science fiction with meaning and intellectual science fiction and science fiction that took on strong themes and wasn't just a dystopian future mm. uh, and zombies and crap. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to also, if you've ever been on a science fiction series and if you've ever been out on the convention circuit, there were many years in my life where I didn't work for a year, didn't work for two, and the fan base has been so kind and loyal and keeping all of our careers alive and being good to us that we wanted to do uh, uh, some kind of project that was an homage to them, an homage to the great science fiction anthology, people of the past, Rod Roddenberry and... Uh, Rod Serling and Alfred Hitchcock and all those folks and so what we're doing is we're bringing fans filmmakers and celebrities together and so for each episode that we finance on Kickstarter or through the private sector we're gonna bring 10 fans on to every episode that we're able to get financed for however long this series lasts mm -hmm. and we're gonna bring five fans on that are amateurs that just want to learn and come and intern and behind our departments and learn about filmmaking that are passionate about filmmaking and we're going to bring five people on that have some skills already and that bring something to the table and hopefully open some doors and get some credits and and meet some people and make this a, co a collaborative project we've always been selling it and pitching it as the most collaborative science fiction anthology fan collaborative and celebrity collaborative filmmaker collaborative uh, anthology ever made and if you want to submit you don't have to pledge we'd love it if you did we need to finance this thing but you don't have to pledge you just send your resume your letter your get, put yourself on a phone tell me who you are why you want to come and at the end of the Kickstarter we're going to sift through all those submissions and pick the first 10 fans to come help us with the project wow. That's incredible. I love that you're doing that for, for mm -hmm. people because that'll really get some people's foot in the door in the industry. So I love that. Yeah. And well, obviously, the amount of years or you know whatever you've had planning, the quality should be even better. Um, but I want to close out on just mentioning the obvious. You know, you're on Kickstarter. Uh, we are currently filming on the 27th with 25 days left to go. You reached your first goal. You should never say your goal. It's your first goal of $50,000, which was really, really, I'm very, very happy that you guys got that in such a relatively short amount of time. 
uh, really great to see and we hope you guys get a lot more but if you do want to pledge please do hopefully this, is, uh, this has got you excited and and trusting Manu you know he did us well on Voyage he's done us well on other films and Passenger Fifth Passenger will come up pretty darn soon to see his work on that you know this guy give him that chance and let him not only you know he, he's got that first chance but help him make something even better and even better and even better and everyone will benefit from that yeah, the whole team here knows what we're doing. I mean, we're professional mm. filmmakers. Uh, mm. oh, yeah. The whole small team that we have is really, really talented people. So we're going to bring you something special you can trust in the project. Awesome. So there will be a link to the description or okay. to the um, Kickstarter in the description below. So click that, guys, or just go on to Kickstarter and type in the circuit. And if you guys can donate and help it out, that'd be totally amazing. And we would definitely love to see that. So. Anyway, I think that perks are really fun. Check out the perks. And just even if you don't pledge, enjoy the page. The page is fun, mm -hmm. too. We've set up some fun stuff, so enjoy it. Cool. All right. Well, I think that calls it a wrap for this episode. Um, if you liked the video, please click a like. Don't forget to share it. Share the mm -hmm. word about the circuit. Get that out there as well. And, um, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you guys next time on another Trek Yards um, podcast so thank you Manu for joining us and uh, we look forward to speaking with you again about a few other little things and uh, I guess until then I'm Captain Foley I am Connor Kungs I'm Manu Ante Reme I guess bye everybody bye bye